This is a Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry K. Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on World Anvil, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. You'll find links to that and our other forms of media for our sessions as well as an index of this episode in the description. This episode has jump cuts to keep the runtime down. Previously, under the ruined arena of Tarek Nev is a Hydra, guarding an island with crystals surrounded by swirling water, any of which could be the final artefact the questers need. The puzzle of how to drop the protective rainbow shield about the island has been solved, and now the beast must be overcome. And we'll have initiative rolls, please. But I will take uh, 20 off the Hydra's initiative, because it is, poor thing, confused. As surprised as the creature is, I'm afraid it is still going to go first. Uh, one, two, there's three of you around the outside. So there's an equal chance we'll go from the top and around. So that means, unfortunately, it comes at you. At, at least you float, Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck. And actually, in fact, it'll probably come to there. And actually, it will just breathe a cone of fire. And that, of course, means uh, it will catch you, Victoria, you, Ugnan, and you, Acor. Oh, uh, you smart beast. <laughs> Animal cunning. And that's just a GM. So we'll do the attack on um, Acor first. Acor, you take 10 points of damage and you take a B critical. You catch that full force of that flame right in your face, I'm afraid. Uh, oh so I'm going to drag that across to you, Acor. Um, How sexy is that for effects? Oh, look! The glycons, beautiful. Okay. Uh, so the attack on Ugnan. Ugnan, what's your armor type? Is it armor type one? Yeah. Okay. You I hate take, it on fire. Uh, you take one point of damage only, no critical. Yes. And then Victoria, you're missed. What? What? Oh. Whatever right your head. Yeah, what? you're missed. Oh. Hates archers. That... Sorry, you Victoria, Victoria. You weren't even. You weren't even there. Sorry, it should have been. Yes, it missed you. Okay, that's it. My turn. Just to be clear, this 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 Hydra went for Victoria, and both her and Ugnan went. Phew, that was close. Meanwhile, I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, I appreciate Acor taking one in the face for the team just to see what the what the, like little icons look like. That's appreciated, bro. You've got it fixed in the RMU when that eventually comes out, though, haven't you? <laughs> eventually. Yeah, I think I think you're getting targeted now by the GM. This is like uh, 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 okay. That's the last we saw of Colin. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's your turn. Fortunately, you had a spell. Can Cran, did Cran get to act? I know I moved myself up in the initiative. Um, um, so actually, sorry. Yes, Cran, can you go now, please? Because you would have gone. Uh, yeah, you would have gone. Cran, off you go. You can make your attack, please. So he steps in and gives them a right old thumping with Shieldbreaker. And if only that was a 92, not a 29. Okay, you managed to do 15 points to the creature. Your blade is magical. Mm -hmm. so you can give me a high open-ended roll, please, John. Okay. Not um, bad. So it took 13 points. And then stunned. Does that mean you didn't get to flame breath off? Um, no, it wouldn't have done, actually. So I'm going to set you at zero because John would have gone first. Um, so Victoria, you weren't damaged at all. And Acor, I'm removing all of yours. So if I go to that Ooh. and remove oh, that. Oh, lucky. Remove that. So there you go. <laughs> so you're all fine. So uh, the Creature was then stunned, tried to, was probably going to do something nasty and didn't. Ugnan, it is now your turn. Okay, shouts out, Brassator! And then Blinding Flash comes your off. Eye. Yes, he fumbles. What does that mean again? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, nice, nice casting. Extra preps, yeah. Look at him go with the flamboyant incantations. 
Unfortunately, it'll slowly cap out underneath the UMs. So, <laughs> okay, oh, that's wasted. Uh, it will make the creature is clearly dazzled and thrashes and writhes and and. So, for every oh, ten of failure, Stuart, it's a round of stun. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. That's him. Victoria, your turn. But I'll take five feet, sir. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna attack him. First attack. So that's seven points of damage. Uh, first mm -hmm. of all, then you'll do large uh, creature critical first, please. Ooh! Oh! Oh! You cool. didn't roll it. So oh, ninety-seven. I oh, shot up ninety-seven. Oh! <laughs> oh man! So another twenty-two hits. And it's stunned for another two rounds. Okay, so second attack. Ah. Ah. And that still manages to sneak through for six points of damage. And oh, you'll do you'll... an open-ended roll, please. Critical. Open-ended, okay. Yeah. Nice. High open-ended. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that was just an open-ended. Well, yeah, it'll work the same. Yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so another twenty-two hits, and another two rounds of stuns. Hmm. The creature is reeling under the weight of your blows. Uh, Acor, it's your turn. You, your life flashed before you as fire erupted up the corridor, <laughs> and then you realised it was only a dream. <laughs> uh, I would like to take the opportunity to shoot it with my longbow and hope that it goes as well as it did before. Bigger. Let's do and this. add your easy for plus 20. Uh, off. Sorry, I didn't do the plus 20. Flies and hits it for four points of damage. But no critical, I'm afraid. Snarkle. He's uh, looking back behind him and rushes forward, making sure he's as close, if not into the square of the Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, chops it with his hand axe and the new shield that uh, Victoria gave. For Grandpa P who died in the water! <laughs> <laughs> he has fallen in the water! Hey. Oh, no target. Okay. okay. For his wife, too! Well, that was better. Well, nice. that wasn't a lie. So that's uh, 10 points of damage. Oh, and sorry, plus 20 for stunned. I didn't add that. Okay. Uh, that will take it up two. That makes a difference because it's an extra two. But you do manage this time to just manage to sneak home with a critical. Higher Ooh. Penalties. Here we go. Oh, that 90 is next. And you're using Cran's magic axe. Okay. Uh, so that's 20 points. And that takes us to initiative, please. Oh, beastie, you bleed. Uh, Uglin is going to prepare a spell. That's it. Okay. Uh, Cran. Um, so, Cran looks, he sees the kind of heads all lolling around, by, like yeah. kind of thrashing yeah. and bumping into each other, assuming this thing is dazed. He's just going to attack all, all in. Oh, oh man! I thought, I thought that was a double O, and it was yeah. a ten. Damn it's it! Weird, isn't it? It's ninety and ten is a hundred. Okay. At least I didn't fumble and like slice my own foot off, which was, could have been worse. No. Uh, so give me a, another high open-ended roll, please. Okay, that's another eighteen hits. Perfect. Victoria. Okay, let's have another go. Okay, that's uh, seven points. And can you give me? Open-ended magic critical, please. Okay, oh, nice grids. Seven is another 22 hits. <laughs> and and stun for two more rounds. Stun for two more rounds. So it's hey. Four, uh, 11 rounds. And <laughs> 11 rounds. Okay, 11 as if it's going to need it. I'm preparing I mean, I've done it six <laughs> rounds. <laughs> and second attack. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. That'll hurt. Oh. 
from and 16. Another seven points of damage. And another open ended, high open ended. Oops, roll the 55 this time, which is another 25 hits. I think this uh, is called making dog meat of it. Yep. But of course, you could fumble and start shooting each other. Acor, you're <laughs> loading your bow. Uh, yep. Busy loading next time. I'm really going to do some damage. Uh, Snarkle, it's your turn. Sorry. For the uncle, will it be? Trouble with dwarves is when they get excited, oh. can't understand a bloody word they're saying. <laughs> Sorry, plus 20 <laughs> to that as well, I forgot. Oh, plus 20. I get excited. Nine. But that's it, I'm afraid. That's okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll go for initiative rolls again, even though the Hydra isn't going to be doing much. Okay, Ugnan, it is you to go first. Second round of prep. That's it. Okay. Cran. Thumping it hard again with the sword. He's going to go to chop one of the heads off. He's not messing around anymore. 20 points of damage. High open ended, please. Cran's going to throw his sword in the river in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my action after that. Okay, the 27. Um, okay, it's another 10 hits. Yeah, brute. Victoria, it's your turn. Uh, oh, do I not... Can I shoot my arrow? Yeah. Uh, not this. Oh, sorry, Acor. Yes, I'm sorry. I obviously skipped past you. Sorry, Acor. Yes, it's your turn. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. Nice. Plus nice. 20. 69. 11 points of damage. And you can give me um, a high open ended roll on the critical table. 36 is another 12 hits which is not quite enough to drop the creature completely, but it is close to collapse. Victoria. Let's finish it. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's going to sting. Jeez, 228. Only. Try harder. Damage. And you get to roll um, your high open-ended critical, please. That is enough to drop the creature. Ooh, Vex dead. There you go. Cool. Hydra collapses. Can you all oh, give me perception? Can you all give me perception rolls, please? That seems way too easy, no? Yeah, Crane looks at everyone and goes, oh, that was that planning. Was that was planning. It wasn't just running in going, Oh I've got this lads, I'll chop its heads off, or oh, I've got these little kids. Let's just all think about what we're gonna do. Well, as the creature drops to the ground with wounds gaping and oozing blood from multiple slashes, cuts and so on, even a few arrows sticking in it, um, the wounds are beginning to heal. The blood sizzles into the crystals, but that dripping and oozing of blood is beginning to slow. The creature is beginning to regenerate. I'm going to start lopping heads off. Grant doesn't know what else to do. He's going to just take the nearest head and like give a massive swing with the uh with the sword to try and sever it okay um, and throw it in the water i will follow suit okay uh so you begin to chop heads off and toss them into the water um that seems to stop the wounds regenerating and soon all you're left with is a headless um corpse of a hydra blood is still dripping onto the crystals can you all give me another perception roll please hmm the blood that the cre- that is still oozing out of the creature's body drips onto has dripped onto some of the crystals, and you can see where the blood has come into contact with the crystals. The crystals look as if they've, be- they've been damaged, pitted, and cracked. So the creature's blood is extremely caustic. And- oh, I, I'm going to immediately start washing the sword in the water if I see that, and I, I'm also going to then splash water on my armor. I can try and like oil it later but just to try and wash any corrosive blood off me i think the speed with which you dispatch the creature probably did um you probably got splashed minimally but the blood is certainly very very toxic you are now however free to search amongst the crystals to try and find the last portal rod 
Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> Should you so wish? Ugnan, come oh, over right. here. I'll have a gander. Yeah, let's all have a look. Okay, Bring Acor across. He's stranded. That too. Okay, give me. Um, these are just extremely hard perception rolls, please. Okay, so both Acor and Ugnan um, are very quickly able to recognize that one of the crystals stands slightly proud of the rest of the crystals which rest on the floor. Um, to your disappointment, the crystals that um, fill the floor don't appear to be particularly valuable. None of them have been finished. They're just crude and unfinished. Way to take any of them back with the right sort of craftsmanship, you could probably turn these into crystals that are probably worth a couple of silver pieces each. Um, but you'd have to find a craftsman to make them and the effort to make these crystals into something that somebody might buy is probably not worth the expense. Um, however, you are able to find the last portal rod that you need. You now have the pair. Ugnan, um, the second one looks very similar to the one that you have. The crystal at the top is a slightly different colour, but otherwise they appear to be identical. And there you have it. You have both crystal, both of the portal rods that you need. You also have the Ashling Stone. Let's get the fuck off this island. Yeah, way, oh, I don't know why it's northern, but yeah. <laughs> Why, hey, man? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I mean you can you can try and now leave the island. Obviously, you've got to get out of the city. Uh, you've got to get to your airship and get off. You can leave without exploring the rest of the city. You can leave without dealing with Bramavere, who is trapped back in time somewhere. Um, there are all sorts of loose ends that you might want to discuss. So you've got Grandma there, who is, you know, who sent herself, used the portal rods and sent herself back in time to avoid the destruction of the city, but is now trapped back there. Presumably she can do no harm there, although she might. There's, remember, you've got the soul of that warrior. You're carrying these three strange yellow stones around that have trapped souls. And one of them belonged to a general, General Mortillus, who asked you to free him. Yeah. Um, Remember, his body is possessed somewhere in an underground arena, and he's yeah. So that I body and release him. Cram um, would like to do that if possible because of there are other limits. structures on the island that you could explore. You've already found a host of potent artifacts. Remember, you've also got some very, very, in fact, one particularly lethal and unpleasant artifact that you've got to deal with, an hourglass. Yeah. That it's capable of leveling and killing entire cities. Um, you know there's a boatload of other explorers led by um the infamous one thumb who's coming to the place. You could maybe wait and give him an ambush or just leave him. And then of course there's the inhabitants of the stockade who you promised to help. So my view is we should definitely deal with Odvar and crew. Especially, I, isn't he leading Iron Bell representatives here? I'm a bit... That's a right. Bit so, yeah. yeah, so um, if you remember, Oath in One Thumb was something more than just an underling and has taken on more of a sort of um, a leading role, if you like, as one of your many enemies. Um, the Iron Bell is all but finished, but the Iron Bell was part or was basically a sort of a cat's paw for a, a larger group. Remember, there is the disgraced minister yeah. who was part of a failed coup. Um, and he is also on this boat as well, or has ordered certainly Othin to be on this boat. So you could try and deal with that and remove a significant threat to the emperor. Remember, you already foiled a plot which was going to bring Eidolon crashing down on the city. Um and you've not cashed in on, on a potential reward for that. Remember, you left for the city, or rather you left for Tarek Nev before journeying to Eidolon, where you had an open invite um, to maybe cash in on that. And, of course, then there's the issue behind Queen Mab, the strange blue sprite sylph thing that seems to be following you around, and the portal rods that you now have, and the fact that she's insisting that all portals will remain closed 
until the heart of the goth is returned to her, whatever that is. So uh, in, in, I guess, chronological order, we need to just wrap up anything we want to do on Tarek Nev first. Um, I think Queen Mab could be an incredible ally if we, well, first off, do we, are we any closer to Queen, the heart of a goth? I just don't know. Um, because the other thing would be to rescue the other seventh member of the doppelganger group of who used to be us. I can't remember her name, uh, but she was yeah. trapped. So Patience Clute is Patience, really coming to the island to rescue, to get items so you could rescue Patience Clute. Um, that's what's brought you here. So if you just focus on that first, yeah. Patience Clute, you know, is trapped beneath um, Cell Kai in the underground cisterns. Um, you defeat. So we needed the Ashling Stone for that, didn't we? And the yeah. and the portal rods. And the portal yeah. rods. Yeah. Okay. The Ashling Stone was the most important, but the portal rods as well. Oh, so we have all of that now, then. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's only really vanity if we're staying around here. Um, although, oh. is it? Can we destroy the? <laughs> Sorry, Matt's complete to finish attendance. He's just came. Let's read. <laughs> we can't leave Tarring <laughs> oh, There you, are you could about argue. fifteen buildings, twenty-four dungeons still to explore. Yeah, right. you, could, you could argue that those evil guys, if they get here, the kind of things they could pick up, release, sell them to the world, that kind of thing. So what we could do is just kill them and then be done with it and just leave. I've Matt's still twitching. That. Do you want to do ambush them? I've always thought about that, just waiting in horror. Or just, just. But then again, we don't know how long passes. I mean, for all we know, five minutes could have passed. Yeah. It, and we could be waiting here for ages. Right. Or maybe 50 years have passed and they were they were foundered on the way in. Right. And you yeah. have a passage of time because the longer you stay, the less you need to eat, the less you need to drink, the less you need to sleep. I mean, um, personally... Do infested island. I'd, I'd be quite keen to just leave it. Yeah, and so that was the whole reason Silk ran off was to save you guys from having to deal with the uh, demon. So she she would be fine with you leaving. It was at this point in the session that we had a good old discussion about what we we're going to do next. So I'll not bore you with that. I've cut that all out. So we'll go on to the next session where we're missing Colin, but Yarn's back. You stand then outside this uh, peculiar arena, ready to cross the bridge to go to the mainland. Yeah, big big soldier. How do we get back to the ship that you came on? I don't know. To be honest, I think Silk was going <laughs> to going to call them down. No, 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 I've got a signal in the mirror. We, we, we had we had a little um, bit where we'd signal every I think it was every day or every two days we'd signal in the mirror when we're outside the gates. That's right, so they're going to come down when we signal. But the problem is I don't know how long we've been in this city. What were they going to do when you hadn't signalled after two days? Well, no, they're supposed, to, they're supposed to stay here for, what, two weeks? Yep. So if time's passed, I don't know what they're going to do. Why, why, why are we staying in this accursed place? I, I don't understand. There's some elf you keep talking about, and I don't understand why we need to stay for some elf. What's going on? Actually, uh, a uh, little uh, dwarfish light lad. I don't think it's dwarfs in this thing. Midget light guy. Uh, he's got a bit worried now, actually, uh, big lad, because what if time's passing and we're close to uh, the two week mark, even though we think we've only been here about three days? It could bugger off and leave us. Maybe at least we do is get out the gate, signal the ship, and let them know we're still around and maybe see how long's passed. Fuck me, Hitto. Hey, no. Get out, gate, oh, uh... signal ship, make sure the, the ship is still there. If the ship's gone. We've got to think of another way. Maybe the ship at the dock to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, good point. So, yeah, Cram puffs out his cheeks and... Uh, fuck, uh, okay, let's do that then. Well, Can't we signal him from here? No, because uh, if it gets any closer over the, the walls, it's going to get uh, bolted by the uh, gar gargoyles. Yeah, and remember that uh, yeah, the good signaling point. mirror you've got, there's no sunlight to signal with, so you need to get out of the city so you've got some sunlight to be able to signal with. Yeah. What do you reckon, Victoria? Yeah, let the ship know we're here. All right, tactical re retreat yeah. then, is it, big lad? Yeah, we never retreat. We're just uh, reassessing the situation before returning. So you're moving forwards in an unorthodox manner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly that. <yeah. laughs> 
I don't, I don't feel it's right a good about good decision. Leaving. Let's do it. It doesn't sit right with leaving the um the flighty alpha, even though she brought the bloody thing upon herself, a silly cow. But you know, maybe we've got to trust in her ability. She can fly. She can be invisible. And if she's possessed by something evil, maybe she's pretty safe at the moment. Yeah, I. She definitely don't want to be found, and knowing her, she ain't going to be if she don't want to be. Um, one one thing we could do is grab one of those boats, round on the docks, row round there. It's probably safer than going. Well, <laughs> arguably safer than going uh, across across the open ground again. All right, so what do Unless... you get out of the city, see how long's passed, and make a decision from there. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So you decide to get out of the city, contact your airship, get a bearing on how long you've been gone, and then, spending on time, head back into the city. Exactly, yeah. So, route, how are you getting out? Which direction? If we walk down, walk along those docks, there may well be a boat we could row the rest of the way. Although, I don't like the look of these enclosed areas that might be keeping massive serpents type things at bay, or, in which case would be pretty vulnerable in a small boat. Yeah, the, the wall around the city also walls in that archipelago of islands. So yeah, let's wall... go around the coast then, shall we? Okay. Um, so that means turning uh... almost left immediately that you cross the bridge uh-huh. and then going all the way around. Yep. Yeah, if we can do cut off that little peninsula bit, that would be helpful, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that. Okay, well, you can certainly try um, with some sort of navigation role. You emerge feeling fairly after some prolonged discussion about where next, what next. It dawns on you that you really should check on your airship, which is your only means off the island, there being no ships. Remember, you've got that other, those group of pirates, buccaneers that you promised to aid as well. You immediately then turn to your left and within seconds find the large or find the coastline. Uh, You can feel the breeze on your faces and you start walking. Please, that's this close to um, the open water. There is at least a breeze and your visibility is slightly greater. Still carried on the air, there's a faint essence of cloves and cinnamon and herbs, perhaps from the city's distant past. But there's also a strong stench of burning that hangs in the air. Across to your right, you can see some rather large and what were perhaps once well-tilled farmlands. Just ahead of you, you can see that the ground becomes increasingly rocky, some form of peninsula. And you vaguely remember that you couldn't recall any large structures on this as you flew over, but there were a cluster of small houses. Can you make, or can one of you, or all of you, make either a navigation roll or a sheer folly perception roll, please? Don't mind which. Navigation roll with no penalty. Sorry, an extremely hard perception roll. Okay, there's some discussion as to which direction and when to turn to your right. But after a while and after some fairly heated discussion, you reach an accord. Snarkle and Cran, you're you're a little bit hesitant um, to agree with Acor and Ugnan, but acceding to the fact that they should know a little bit more, Ugnan being the learned person that he is, who's never let you down. And Acor's reputation as a tracker means that Snarkle will trust him. After what feels like some hours, but it's difficult to tell the passage of time, you turn to your right and head down towards what you hope to be another stretch of open not quite coastline, but maybe shoreline. And sure enough, after a while, you come in sight of what look like um, some small cottages and houses, obviously all in ruins. And you can smell and feel a breeze coming across from the east. So you must be close to the water. 
moving closer and almost scenting the air to help navigate yourselves. Within minutes, you can see that the murk is beginning to clear, disturbed as it is by what is obviously quite a strong breeze. And you can see what looked like a number of uh, faded wooden jetties sticking out into the steaming waters like so many discarded and rather um, jagged teeth. The waters are still, but there's a steam and a mist coming off them, which betrays their, their heat and the warmth in them. As you pause, relieved that you've found the right way, you now just have to follow the coastline, you think you can hear leathery wings across on the other side of the water. Can you all make perception rolls, please, in the tower? No penalties, just the best perception roll wins, I guess. Acor and Snarkle, you look at each other and then at the other two, uh, sorry, and then at the rest of the party. All of you have encountered Wivens before on the islands and they have a distinct leathery snap to their wings. They tend not to soar like big dragons and large reptiles. They fly almost like birds, but because their wings are leathery rather than feathered, there's a distinct snap as they as they move their wings. So, there are wibbons, and it sounds like a number of them, at least at least a pair, and that means they're probably a mated pair, moving around above the islands on the other side of the water. Some of us have eaten wibbon. <laughs> do you want to mm, this tastes like chicken do you want Drumsticks. to do you want to do anything in particular or do you just want to move away as quickly as you can they're tough because remember the last time we fought these I mean, Silk had to jump on one was point blank sh shock bolting it in the head and it still took a couple of those with us all wailing on it as well Yeah. So this is a mated pair and is there any if you recall sorry. when you flew over the dragon sorry John uh, when you flew over the dragon, uh, sorry, flew over the islands, one of the islands had a large, what looked like a great dragon's corpse on it. Now, it could oh, have yeah. been a wibbon, but it would have been the mother of all wibbons. Uh, let's see if I've got a better resolution map of that. Let me show you that just as a, as a tempter. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. So tempted. Damn you, Stuart. Like the mafia. Now, Every time I'm you think you're going out. I'm not saying that dragons have treasure, <laughs> but shh, dragons have treasure. Now, since we're, we're, go, we're going east, the dungeons are always to the east. Let's go east. No, 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 no. get out. Signal the but. Uh, but signal these the ship. are very, very dangerous, and these are definitely wivens, not dragons. I wouldn't throw a pack of dragons at you. Um, Matt would, but I wouldn't. No, I <laughs> totally would. Signal the yeah. ship. Mm -hmm. If the ship's still around, we've still got some time to play with. Maybe we come back. Well, we've got to do something while we're waiting. Oh, sorry, uh, Acor, uh, new accent. Um, we must do something while we wait. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I am my count upon the count. One, One cookie. Ah, ah, ah. My favourite character of all time. <laughs> Absolutely my favourite. Sorry. Okay, so... Do you think there's treasure on those islands? It's count on count, brother! <laughs> Um, Definitely. Yeah, so you know that Wibbons, I mean, Snarkle and Acor, you know that Wibbons are not as avaricious as dragons, but the thing that the others are pausing about and they've remembered is that was a corpse of a, either the mother of all Wibbons on the island or very likely a dragon. Those winged creatures, those could be Wibbons taking, I don't know, Wiven's taking the opportunity to take over a dragon's nest, maybe. There's, there's something a little bit off, if you like. If you can hear two Wivens, they're likely a mated pair, which adds to the danger because Wivens are often solitary. So you've got that temptation of investigating, or you can just hide until you can't hear the wings, or you can run for it. It's up to you. Creatures aren't flying towards you, but they are flying around the islands and the water across to your left. Snarkle, my friend, let us go. Take team, but after. Yeah. Yeah. You're I any good with that bow there, Acor? No. 
The Russian front. Yeah. Yet. Okay. I think I want to find some more treasure, but I also, you know, I don't want to stay on this island very long, much longer. So I, so, I don't know what to do. Hey, hey, you old man, what do you think? And you soldier. Ship, signal ship, make sure ship's still there. And then see how long's passed. For all we know, the ship, we could have been gone two minutes. Because you've got to think, time passes very, very slowly here. Or maybe it passes very, very fast. But the reason why I don't think it goes too fast is maybe would have spotted the other lot come in yet. But either way, what, yeah, what, I, is I, this I, other, what is this other locked lot you are talking about? Do you have some enemies you have not told me about? Well, what are they? Uh, what are they going I to do? I think we told you about them. They're the Iron Bell uh, and a bunch of other near the wells, including some yeah, you'd love guy them. with one thumb. They wanted to he drop, needs a good kicking as well. They wanted to drop a city on top of a city, so you'd love them. So they're not really going to be particularly friendly. Sacrifice you to whatever gods they like. I think we need to get out of here. See what we're at, and then make a decision to go back in, grab a bit more, or just leave at that point. Yeah, I think you make sense. I think you make sense, old man. I, I, I don't want us to lose our treasure to these these people. Um, I think I think that's sensible. Okay. So you're in agreement. You decide to hold fire on investigating dragons, wivens, uh, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. And you carry on following that, the shoreline down. Yes, yeah, so I know for now. That, you decide that um, making a mental note. We'll put that in a. We'll pin. Put a pin in that and come back to it. Massive um, dragon horde to the east. I'm just making a note of the map. Right. <laughs> um, just draw no, right on the map. I'd better make a note of that as no. I'll, I'm going to record that as here. Here be dragons. <laughs> yeah. You can record it as um, here be treasure. We'll see who's <laughs> right. So you decide prudently to make as much use of the cover as you can. Can you all give me stealth rolls, please, in the tower? Okay. Thank you. Stealth rolls, not a chance. Oh, so I got think it. that's you. at minus fifty-seven, but we'll see. <laughs> Crad just falls in the water. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Do you not remember when we first started? Like, I couldn't even climb. Okay. There you go, Cran. That's excellent. <laughs> Minus nine. <laughs> That's a skiing. Cran um, stumbles and falls and with a curse uh, almost wrenches his ankle. Uh, Cran, sorry, John, I heard you talking about moving manoeuvre rolls. Give me a moving manoeuvre roll, buddy. Oh, you would. And you don't have the specialised skill of falling gracefully clad in armour carrying 18 weapons. Okay, this is not going to go well then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've just broken my neck. I, uh, what an inauspicious way for Cran to go. Okay. So, um, Cran is not the most stealthy of people. Can you all, as Cran curses and clasps his leg, fearing that he's wrenched it, he hasn't, um, can you all make perception rolls? You fear that the noise that Cran made when he unfortunately let out the sort of expletives that only Cran knows, um, Sarissa finds them endearing, I guess. <laughs> but nobody else does. Um, Particularly like thundering bellend as a... Uh... <laughs> as a as an expletive which uh, goes very well for she calls you honey bunny and you call her <laughs> thundering bell end yes of course match made in heaven <laughs> so cran as you rub your leg and look guiltily around hoping that you haven't attracted anything at all you can hear that the wing beats that you heard earlier have actually stopped and there's a pronounced stillness that descends on the air. What you can also hear, Cran and Acor, is across to your right, further inland, near the farmland as it was, the allotments, I suppose, you can hear whistling. You can hear what sounds like a shepherd's pipe playing. Oh, it's cock. A couple of hundred yards away, 
but it's coming closer, but slowly. Now, remember your vision, such as it is, is limited to about 50 feet. Right, let's double time itself, quick. Whoa, 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 whoa. last time that happened, everybody got split up, so how are we gonna keep together? Uh, hold on to each other, right. hold hands, hold, dance. Hold hands, just never speak of this again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so forming as you do that well, uh, well-known primary school kindergarten um, <laughs> crocodile chain. We're professionals, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and with a grimace of "we, this never happened," you hold hands. Can't believe that level ten characters in Rollmaster are genuinely holding hands and running. <laughs> <laughs> are we all the oxen free? Yeah, right. Catch me, catch me. Um, so you decide that the best way that you can run as fast as you can, but also stay in contact because of this murk that will, will otherwise separate you, is to hold on to whatever weapon straps and so on that, that protrude behind. Now, most of you have got sort of loose belt, loose belts, scabbards and so on. So you're able to do so. I'm not going to ask you to make a moving maneuver roll. You just decide to prudently run. Are you running as fast as you can, or do you want to use any? Excuse me. Or do you want to do this with any sort of stealth? Is it just run, or is it sneak away quickly? Probably jog, jog pace. So not trying to be fairly quiet, except that yeah. Cran okay. sounds like a load of ball bearings and washers in a washing machine. Unfortunately, so. Okay, Cran, you're. I'm going to assume that you are the actually Snarkle and Cran. You are probably the worst at this. Snarkle, you would be the slowest, so you would be running quite quickly to keep up with them because uh, they're all quite tall. As it happens, can you two please just give me a stealth roll, please? No penalties, just a straight stealth roll. And you might want to roll Stalk this time. Oh, sorry, Stork. Thank you very much. No, no, no. But I think John rolled skiing last time. Did I? I'm quite good at stalking. You can <laughs> and skiing. Okay. Probably Not very good at skiing. why you almost fell over. You realise you didn't even have your skis on your bell end. <laughs> <laughs> bell end is such a great British. Uh, Offensive word. It's fantastic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> can can, can remove his untrained, his, his unusable <laughs> skis. And I, I'm just removing in the water, saying these were fucking useless. That, that That's might prevent me accidentally doing that, now. doing that in the future. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, moving as quickly as you can, um, but still keeping a wary eye on what might be to your left and to your right. You jog uh, <sighs> through the remaining villages, and after a while, the pan pipes begin to recede and recede until everything goes quiet. Now, you've been jogging for some time and then decide to pause, catch your breath, and just get a bearing on where you are. Can all of you give me either a perception roll or a navigation roll? If it's navigation, I want it to be a hard navigation roll. If it's perception, I want an extremely hard perception roll, please. So you pause um, and just check on your surroundings. And fortunately, Acor, who you've kind of trusted the most, I suppose, to navigate you, he is supposed to be a woodsman and he has claimed to be a tracker. So you've deferred to either him or Ugnan so far. Ugnan, you're struggling a little bit. Your age and various infirmities, which is... <laughs> discussed offline are beginning to catch up with you if you recall Ugnan is something of a bit of a mystery because he looks like an old man but he isn't okay Ugnan is no older than Cran for example um, I shouldn't have used Cran as an example <laughs> if you eat your vegetables I don't think Cran does the vegetable thing um, no it's pure keto that's right um, Ugnan you'll remember has always been very coy about his background um, and he's prematurely aged considerably so that's uh, anyway, a great key background note that's wild uh anyway um ugnan pauses to catch his breath which means that you defer to akel who leads you the way 
And after a while, Acor pauses and says, whoa, let, let's stop here. And he points across and you can see about 50 or 60 feet. You can see just through some buildings, you can see the land just begins to slope down into the water again. So you're still close to the coast, um, or sorry, the shoreline. Across to your right, you can just see an open area, maybe distantly some buildings. What you can also see um, that sort of prickle that blackness are what look like some red dancing lights. But as you pause, everywhere around you is quiet and you feel quite safe. It looks like whatever was chasing you, um, you've, ev you've evaded. So Crano kind of like let go of holding on to various bits of equipment and clothing of other people and like <laughs> clear his throat a bit. Uh, right, should we, uh, should we move on normal pace now? <clears throat> yeah, hell of a game. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody uh, says at this point, looks like we lost them. They're dead. <laughs> jinkies. you got to start that with jinkies too. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't why don't someone go just just head back into the mist and see if see if we've evaded pursuit? <laughs> okay, so assured that you have escaped whatever that strange whistling thing is, and not alarmed but cautious of the lights that you can see and not willing to investigate them. It is relatively easy to follow the shoreline all the way around until you come to yet again as you weave in and out of buildings. Um, can you all give me, no, I won't ask for a perception roll yet. You come across what looks like a low wall, perhaps one of the odder structures that you've seen. There's a large open sanded area, low walled, but in the center of which there seems to be a particularly smooth sanded area, which has got an opening to one side. There's a colossal sort of eight foot maybe nine foot stone sculpted skull sitting alarmingly in the middle of this sanded area. <laughs> in the center, you can see a series of odd concentric rings. Uh, this is not one of my finest efforts, I must admit. Um, and the great. sand slopes down slightly. So if you imagine that there is a slope, almost like a funnel in the middle of this sanded area, but the sand oh, is perfectly smooth and nothing seems to disturb it apart from a few traces of vegetation. The skull is almost entirely covered in vines, however. Nothing else, though, seems to be moving around inside this sanded area and it seems empty and perfectly placid. What the bloody hell so is going us, on here? Let us go. Keep oh, going. On, on Celestia, really there's some like you weird weird shit thing that uh, it hides under the ice and it kind of makes it look smooth but it puts a hole in the middle and you're kind of walking along and then you fall down the middle. I reckon that's one of those but in sand. I don't know. Fuck knows what's in the middle of that but I wouldn't go in there. Well, it's like this. We, we should check out. If we've just run past a dragon's treasure I'm bloody going into a sand pit. As you enter a huge the mother of all cigars comes and stamps down on you, obliterating <laughs> and burning you totally. Well we just run through the darkness holding hands. We're not bloody killed kids gonna run and play in a sand pit, are we? All right, let's let's carry on. Back down to the okay. ship. Get, okay. get to the ship. Let me just get rid of that. Normal navigation or hard perception, please. Uh, my one let my one rank in navigation I got last level is coming into its own now. Nice. Plus eight, come on. <laughs> Again, um, so close and perhaps wisely, although it's taken you longer to get around the city, um, moving around this, whatever this large sanded area is, you very quickly find the telltale uh, red, colossal red wall that wards Tarek Nev, complete with gargoyles. The gargoyles on top, which you know can fire uh, lethal fire and um, bolts of electricity at flying vessels and potential threats and invaders are all facing outwards and although you know they're somewhat sentient they totally ignore you. Following the wall around you trek on and trek on and continue to trek and trek and then you come across 
um, an obstacle in your way. As close as you are to the, um, the wall and as close as you are to what you hope eventually to be the gate yard, uh, sorry, the um, gate, you reckon you're maybe hundreds of feet away from the gate, you come across what looks like a campfire. The campfire is about 30 feet from you. There doesn't seem to be anybody sitting around it, but the campfire looks, well, just like a regular campfire. On top of the campfire, you can see what looks like some sort of um, pig uh, has been steered and has clearly been rotated because you can see that it has been seared and cooked on all sides. It's not rotating now, of course, because there's nobody to turn the spit. But there is a pig sitting above the fire which crackles quite happily. Um, in front of the fire and just on the other side of the campfire, which is set inside some ruins. If I throw this one across to you, this will do. Um, and if I put the fire on it for you. Pig smells so good. Give me a reasoning roll, Crown. Doesn't need to be particularly high. Yeah, you there's definitely nice pig. There's humans here. Recognize uh, bacon. So give me a reasoning roll, please, Cran. Uh, just in the tower or in the open? No, you can make it in the open. Yeah, that, that's really odd. You can see the bacon. Um, you can hear the bacon, the crackle and pop as the fat big falls into the fire. But you can't smell the bacon. So Cran was salivating and then he goes... Oh, fuck, that's weird. Bacon, well, and beer, well, and women, actually, are the three best smells in the world, and I can't smell bacon, which means that might not be bacon. Mm, I'll that... just pop one of you on the map at the, for the moment. I'll put uh, Cran on the map because he obviously was attracted by the smell of bacon and got a little bit closer, so that's... Um, you're probably about here, Cran. Um, as you look around, Cran... You can see that this is just as you'd expect a regular campfire, complete with roast pig. There are what look to be a couple of wooden logs that have been pulled up near the fire. There look to be some backpacks. And you can actually, Cran, you can hear the jingle of harness. There is a horse somewhere, a horse that's been tied up. But very oddly, there are no smells and you can't see anybody moving around. Oi, lads, this is fucking weird. There's something really strange going on there. Look, it looks just like a camp in the middle of some demon-infested ancient city that time doesn't go properly. <laughs> or it isn't. And I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm urging on the it isn't. Have a look. Can you see that? It doesn't smell of anything. It's bloody weird. It'd bring a horse in here. Old man, please, cast healing spell on big one. He is having stroke. <laughs> oh bloody! I don't know what this is. Because I failed my reasoning roll. Stroke. I think it it <laughs> looks very very nice. It, uh, I'm a bit hungry. It doesn't smell of anything. Who's ever had bacon? Look at that pig! It looks just bloody gorgeous. You can oh, see yeah, like drool yeah. running into my beard. And uh, yeah, can we smell a bacon now? That he's kind of pointing that out. Sorry, say what? Uh, just to confirm what he's saying is, can we now do oh, the yes, same the thing? Rest of it, if you want to make perception rolls as well, Grant says, "But that's odd. I can't smell anything." Can the rest of you make perception rolls? I mean, you look at Cran, and two of you can smell the bacon, but you can't hear the noises of the fire. So somebody said, "Well, it's not smell. It's it's sound. I I can't hear anything." And you quickly realise, as you describe what you can see, that all of you are actually sensing this, uh, sensing the bacon. God, where did I come up with this idea? You are all sensing the bacon in different ways. Some so together can... we make one person. Together you make one hunk of dead pig. Yeah, <laughs> some of you can smell it, some of you can hear it, you can all see it. Hmm. Who is, well, he, I think he was running out of arrows, so 
but he'll he'll grab a stick if there's one close. Acre yep. will and throw it towards the pig. Try to aim and see if it goes through it. If it's illusionary as, or something. As you then. suspect, as the arrow moves and it wouldn't probably have brushed off one of the logs that you can see. It just passes through the log, which doesn't change. But you note that your twig, branch, whatever it is, stone, moves through the log, goes through the pig without reaching any obstacle. That's clearly an illusion. Let's just get on. Yeah, let's keep moving. Could we get back to the point in a minute? Come oh, on, lads. Bloody Tarek no trickery. Can't really trust anything in this place. Okay, where do you want to go? Do you want to go underneath this ruin or over the top of the ruin, so to speak? Uh, probably... You can see just to the north, you can see the doorway to the building that this illusionary um, barbecue is in has collapsed. So do you want to go around the door side or do you want to go around the back? Around the back? Would you recommend pointing with, an yes. arrow? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to do that way. Mm -hmm. Smart, yeah. Keep your eyes on the, uh, on the corners. Okay. You move around towards the rear, and within a very short period of time, you're back at the gate. Here you go. Some of you might remember that. The red gate. I can remember the password. You'll remember, you remember that the red gate, indeed, is warded by a particularly powerful demon. So you gingerly step around the ruins, circle round, and you can see facing you is the large closed mouth of a demon. His eyes look down on you, and he grins, showing teeth, but a huge tongue behind them, which he can barely keep inside his mouth. And he says in a rather sort of deepish voice, which I won't try and mimic, so you will want to leave now. Oh, I'm desperately looking for the password. In the yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Cal, please. <laughs> Got it. No, no, I think you have to pronounce it, Ugnan. I don't think you can just type it, sir. <laughs> I got it wrong the first time. Really bloody at me. <laughs> this is why I would have you say it, sir. <laughs> I'm only, only in a rush and accept when it works. <laughs> yeah. It's Tara Glustreed. No, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> Tara Glustrod. Roar! He eats us. <laughs> um, okay, at least you remembered fairly quickly. So, Terra Glustrod. So, the demon... Oh, nice. Okay, so the demon <laughs> opens his mouth um, and his huge tongue lolls out, which forms, as you'll recall, a bridge across the water, allowing you to exit if you wish. Of course, if you've got that password wrong, he might just swallow you. Who's going first? Victoria? We wait. I'll go yeah, first. Go. Okay, I'll go. Okay. I'll watch Victoria. Ugman steps into the mouth and vanishes. <laughs> nice, yeah. That's Who's a silk next? thing. Yeah, I'm next. Okay, Victoria steps in and vanishes. Acor, Snarkle, this is your opportunity. Finally, now that the others have gone, you're now two on one against Cran. Do you want to take him out now and take all his treasure? No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't tempt me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, when, you know, when NPCs go bad. Okay, so who's next? There's Cran, Snarkle, and Acorn. Now, you've not come across this um, dungeon, uh, sorry, this uh, demon before. Um, fortunately, Acor fumbles his bow. Um, <laughs> Cran, you're going to have to persuade Snarkle and Acor to step through this this demon's mouth. The other two. Are you serious? Boy, lads, this, get, it... get your asses through there. Nothing to worry about. It's the only way out as well. So uh, it's either that or stay here and enjoy demon company for the rest of your lives. Snarkle, I know you for a long time. You first. I read a book on motivational speeches recently, and I'm putting it all to best effect. Or in our time. <laughs> Snarkle, you first. I know you a long time. Please. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was on, that was I'll... dangerously close to love you long time, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I love you cool. long time. Go, you go for five five dollars. Okay, I'm, I'm going Come now. I'm, I'm a bit scared. I'm scared. I'm going. Okay, so Snarkle, you step into snarkle, the guys. demon's mouth. Um, it's damp. The tongue, obviously, as you step onto the tongue, your boots sink into the tongue. And as you look down, you can even see that there's some sort of saliva on the tongue. And you can even see, obviously, gigantic taste buds on the tongue as well. But there's a shimmering and then you appear on the other side. Obviously, the demon's tongue and mouth is more of a portal than an actual fleshy bridge. OK, Cran and Acor, it's just you two remain. Acor, are you next? Or do you want to do I something else? Acor grabs at uh, Cran's hand and goes, wee, and runs into the mouth. <laughs> okay. Um, little did you know that actually Acor is really Silk's brother. <laughs> so, okay. So, Acor, you go next. You step into the tongue and appear on the yep. other side. Cran, um, I won't say you're used to this, but you're familiar with how this sort of magic works. And you step through to. So you, all of you appear on the other side of the city. You've actually managed to get out. Um, unfortunately for at least three of you, time now suddenly telescopes and catches up with you, uh, a little bit like a sledgehammer hitting you. Can you all give me a constitution roll, please? Ugnan, can you give me a disease roll, which at a hard penalty? Victoria, yours is medium. And Cran, yours is light, so you'll get a bonus. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm seeing babies crawling on ceilings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chris, Cran's getting better. I say, Cran and Victoria, so you step out and immediately sort of drop to your knees and are assailed with, um, I mean, you're exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Um and just before you sort of sink down to your knees, you realize that you haven't eaten in days, um, or it feels like you haven't eaten in days. Ugnan, you step through and just promptly pass out. Yep. Well, the 60 will um, help. Looking down, looking down at Ugnan. Um, sorry, Acorn Snarkle, you two are unperturbed by whatever has just happened. Can you give me perception rolls, please? Snarkle um, passes out next to him. <laughs> Minus 140. Okay. Um, so in a way, oh, I've got two I mean, legs. Snarkle. I had a second one. Yeah. <laughs> no. With a plus Ooh. 63, the total is negative 114. Okay. That's um, right. Snarkle. Oh, look at the butterfly. Oh, <laughs> moving. I'm going to catch it. Um, Snarkle. I mean, really, Ugnan and Kranz reaction and victoria's as well it just sort of shows you how little stamina um these these people have um the fact that ugnan has passed out is obviously age related uh Acor, <laughs> you can see something a little bit more however both cran and victoria look um you can see bags under their eyes you can see that they've clearly lost weight their clothing isn't fitting particularly well um, Ugnan looks as if he's going to need probably quite a bit of bed rest. He looks absolutely exhausted and looks absolutely drained, as if as if he's been going on adrenaline for days. Cran just forced himself to eat every four hours. That's what you. That's the secret to living in Tarek Nev. Just force nosh down your throat every four hours. Moving and stirring, Ugnan, you are able to get him to his feet, but he's. Yeah. I won't say he's barely conscious, but the three of you feel absolutely drained. Acor and Snarkle, you're just tired. All of you know, well, all of you need days of rest um, if you're going to be at your best, capable of fighting. You're all, well, certainly three of you are totally exhausted. Two of you are extremely tired. What do you have to do? I don't mate, isn't it? You don't... Fucking older than normal. Uh, have you got that mirror? Let's get this ship signal. I feel absolutely crap. Uh, just take it, lad. Just take it. How do I signal things? Just got to keep looking up until you can see it. Try it to, oh, you know, work it out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all, 
Old one, what can I do to help you? Do you have um, bushy leaf you can become addicted to I can give you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, careful. I'm trying to not take that Kafkuza. But will Brand. that fix oh, you? That draft. Oh, God, if you want to good. try and signal, I need a signaling roll, please. Nailed it! It's okay. <laughs> Shit's coming right down. Well, 16. You burned my not... bowstring, mother... <laughs> Victoria dodges out the way and just says, you'll have somebody's eye out with that mirror. <laughs> That's right. Want me to give it to give it a go? Okay. Fuck, I need, I need to trim me whiskers. Look at those, they're bloody awful. Right. Cran, you, try as you might, you're unable to catch the light. And when you stand up to try and reach up an arm and catch the light to signal across to Whistler's Point, which is the island where you asked your, your ship to remain hidden, um, you're just too tired to hold your hand up aloft for long enough. Victoria, you can have a go, please. Um, your tiredness means that it's very hard. It's hard. And it's going to be a signaling skill roll, please. Yep. Uh, oh, shit. Double. Um, well, those, those rolls actually aren't too dissimilar. And again, it's mm. very, very hard to catch the light. Well, you signal and you wave the mirror around and flash it around, but there's no sort of signaling flashback, but you could be too far away and you're just too tired to peer through the vegetation. Ugnan is slumped against the building with sort of his hand, his head in his hands. Um, you're too tired really to respond to anything, Ugnan. Um, but there is a telltale voice that offers to help remove your exhaustion. No. Quid, quid pro quo, she just offers to remove your exhaustion. Listen, mistress, I've been thinking about this. And you know what? Yeah, let's go for it. I will be your disciple. I will take you to Selkai. Just that you've got to think about this. It's all about um, thinking about how you did as a dark god. It didn't do too well. How about something a bit more uh, mainstream? Like, if you want to be a dark god, you're going to get followers, but not an awful lot. If you get a bit more mainstream, you'll get a lot of followers. I'm just thinking, start thinking about how we could get you more powerful. And yes, I would like to take your age. I, I will become your servant. And that's saying a lot, because I don't really believe in you lot, but you're the first one's ever talked to me. Okay, you, you hear that telltale voice laugh softly and just sort of whisper, um, oh, foolish man, you're already my servant. And how are you telling a, a, a goddess to think about consequences anyway? And with that, she goes quiet and your weariness, your ex your tiredness lifts instantly, Ugnan. Um, I think I've and... just pitched to become her social media manager in downtown. <laughs> I've, I've really <laughs> had tried to say like <laughs> branding. I almost said branding, you know, think about branding. <laughs> You know, you've got to come peel to the manager. Yeah. Your... No. Come what's on, your... Orgiana. Have you thought about your media presence? Yeah, what's your, what's your, <laughs> what's your USP? <laughs> I'm thinking broadsheets. I'm thinking, <laughs> hey, wow, there's a new dark goddess in town. Um, there's a story of that. Okay, Ugnan, you feel everything lift from you as if you've had a shot of, well, you're addicted to everything anyway. You've had a, all of those <laughs> herbs that have been given to you intravenously. Um, you feel fine and ready to go. Acor and Snarkle, you're tired, but you're okay. Do either of you want to try and have a go with the signalling mirror just in case Victoria failed? Or Ugnan, you can have a go now that you are no longer tired. Cran is just, oh, I just need to eat. That's yeah, the let's, let's, the old men should try and do it. Well, they never used to They're do old this. men. Used to be a cherry, I think it was. So we had the good signaling, signaling skill. It might have been Cherry. And we've uh, we bloody left oh, them back at the temple. Fuck, we are Perhaps useless. if we all try and fail at the same time, we will actually <laughs> do good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ugnan, you flash the mirror around. Acor, do you want to have a go? Why don't we light a fire and let a whole load of bloody great smoke column plume up from here? That would do it, wouldn't it? You can do if you want. Yeah, you could also light a fire. Yeah, I might as well try and then light a fire at the same time. Okay, so give, uh, give it to uh, Snarkle as well. And then what I'm going to ask you for, though, to light a fire in this sort of Ooh. steaming, damp <laughs> jungle vegetation. Okay, wow, very cool. Much, uh, Level up. <laughs> no. <Modern> three. 
So, uh, Cran, do you still, uh, you, you're wanting to light a fire. You're going to need something if you're going to now rest until, I mean, where do you want to wait for your ship? It's going to take um, a day or two, depending on when the ship sees you. It's going to take at least a day for the ship to get to you. Where do you want to camp? Do you want to camp near the bridge or do you want to move away from the Red Gate? I would personally think we should go back to the people we promised to try and take off the island. That's the safest place, isn't it? If we if we think we can get there, it's yeah, only half a, what, a few hours travel. Yeah, and you're too tired to make it, Crane and Victor. We're too tired, okay. Yeah, you haven't got two hours in you. You've got minutes. Yeah. Okay, we'll just find somewhere close by. Yeah, I mean, okay. do we have also, strength enough to make some food? What are we going to do about yeah. Cherry and uh, uh, Numal? Oh, they're just around the corner, look. I know you said to meet, meet them. Did they get here, though? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Numal and Cherry are back in the palace, aren't they, as far as I recall? Yep. Is that right? You decide to give in Cran's exhaustion and Victoria's to rest near uh, Terra Glistrod, the bridge, the demonic bridge, while you hope that your ship um, arrives. Cran, you're going to try and set fire. Sorry, not set fire. You're going to try and light a fire. Um, can you give me a survival roll, please? I'm asking you to make one because I don't think it's actually that easy to create a fire when you're in the middle of a rainforest. Especially if you're really, really tired as well, because you need a lot of strength with a bow drill and stuff. You know, so, yeah. The clues in the name, wood is quite damp. First aid fletching. Foraging. Would it be foraging? Foraging. Quite... Yeah, give me a foraging. I got this. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> it's proving very difficult. Does somebody want to help Cran light a fire? Just to Can we say that um, the 100 plus signaling also allowed Cran to have a focused beam of sunlight on his wood too. <laughs> you nice try. You could do if that mirror wasn't a mirror and was a I, magnifying lens. Yeah. I don't want you to focus on Cran's I don't want any focus on Cran's wood, thank you very much. Oh. Okay, so if any of the rest of you want to have a go at a foraging roll, please Oh, foraging. Me. That's easy, yep. yeah. Oh, I got some foraging. Oh, I'm going to make it out, out. Oh, we'll get 180. Good wow. job, Acor. Oh, that's some that's some serious foraging there. Okay. Acor the Ranger. Okay, so Acor, you're able to get a small fire lit and you're able to cook whatever food you've got. Now, Snarkle and Acor, you've got nothing. Victoria, Ugnan, and Cran, on your possessions, do you have anything to eat? So not I've in never had anything effect. to eat. Uh, okay. Inventory, yep. I think. Yeah. I've got a whole load of herbs. They obviously provide <laughs> I've got a loaf of cram. You've got cram? Yeah. Man. Okay. I don't. So I've got a right. lo loaf so of able... cram here, which is feed right. quite a lot of us. It does. So I think if you split that cram between the five of you, I think, was it one loaf of cram is enough for, is it a week? Yeah, it says here, five that. days nutrition per slice, ten slice loaf. Oh, actually, yeah, I've got some cram as well, I've just discovered. Okay. I thought we all had one so, loaf each, actually, but maybe we don't. Yeah, uh, well, we Acorn that. and Snarkle won't. No, uh, but I'll happily give probably been dipping into it already, but not heavily. So, though you don't have anything in the way of fresh food, unless you wanted to hunt, which could be quite risky, you have enough of this enchanted, right. highly nutritious bread, somewhat akin to Kendall mint cake, I suppose. And with your fire lit and some tea bubbling away, you're able to sit down and quietly eat some cram. It's as you come out of the city, you realize actually it's late afternoon. And by the time you've elected a campsite, not too far from the red bridge, the red gate, sorry. Um, and you've hopefully signaled your ship to come and rescue you stars begin to appear and it begins to obviously darken overhead at night rather than being quite quiet um, the jungle actually gets louder 
There are a host, as you're well aware, of nocturnal hunters. You've been warned of some particularly nasty denizen of Tarraknet, sorry, of Aranmore, by the um, inhabitants of the stockade. So you should probably set a watch. Pran and Victoria, you're going to have to go to sleep. You're not going to be able to take the first couple of watches. So it's going to be up to Acor, Snarkel and Ugnan as to whether you take the first watch. Ugnan, as soon as it gets slightly dark, Orgiana sort of steps out of the shadows between the branches and comes and just sits down next to you and just stares into the fire. She doesn't offer any conversation. She just sits next to you silently, staring into the fire, the firelight playing off what are particularly bright eyes tonight. There's a faint smell uh, around her of perhaps lavender. For the first time, Ugden's actually going to look at her, nod and smile, and then just look back at the fire as well. Okay. Um, Acor, Snarkle, do you, which of you wants to take the first watch? I can take the first watch. Okay. Good dwarf, per perhaps I take first, just because you have dark vision, no? Hey, my dwarf, oh yeah, okay, okay, I'm going to sleep now. Watch, okay, thank you. How far from Please. the red gate are we? Um, On its tongue. Yes, <laughs> right. No, literally, I'm wondering that because if things go really, really bad, we know the we know the password. We can scoot through. You, do, smart. you can be as close as you want. I mean, if I call up that map, for example, you could probably use that ruined house, which is what 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, which is maybe about uh, thirty yards away, forty yards. Would that be close enough? Or do you want to be closer, or do you want to be further from the city? That's not bad. That's within running distance or jogging distance, I should say. Yeah, 150 feet, yeah. It is, yeah. Head out onto the, you know where the road is that leads into the city as well. You know that it's clear of obstacles. So actually, it would be, if anything bad happened, you just head to the road, run up the road, shout the name, and bang, you're in the city. Yeah, so we'll get ready to practice the password to. a few times before we go to bed. <laughs> Well, are you telling Acor and um, Snarkle what the password is? I think, I think you should tell me the password before I go to sleep. Okay, it's all you can eat. <laughs> nice. Ugnan, <Don't> <laughs> do you want to withhold the password just in case? Yeah, the, though he's going to be, though he's going to be quite, quite blunt about it. But it's like this, Snarkle, Acor. Uh, so far, so good. But uh, I don't want to give out this password if I, if I don't have to. Just stick with us, keep us alive, and everything's good. If we go through a couple more fights, I'll, I'll, con I'll tell you my bloody penis size. Yeah. I'm just sharing too much, personally, but never mind. I think at that I point... Not know. Why, why are you talking about that? Why are you talking about that? I did not know you cared. I get a little closer to you now. <laughs> you look tired. Let me massage chest. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go on, say, do you like gladiator <laughs> movies? On, do I you like gladiator <laughs> movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, so, you decide to hold the password back. Acre and Snarkle, obviously you've got well, you can take offence at this or you can just accept it. Do you want to make a deal of this just before Ugnan sort of turns in for the night? I mean, Cran is already, there is sort of little Z signs floating up into the air above him. And he's sort of collapsed almost like that, you know, the black Labrador in, in hot summer weather. He's lying on his side and every now and again, his left leg twitches and he scratches himself under his armpit. Um, Victoria is also tired and is asleep. Um, so they they can't help you, Victor. Uh, sorry, Snarkle and Acor. Do you want to make a big deal about the fact that Ugnan is not giving you the password? No, or do you just it, want to let it go? It is fine. I understand. We don't know them. They know password. That's fine. Yeah, they 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 these are the type of people that like to 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 hang out with elves. I think I think they're a bit strange. 
So tell me, Snarkle, what is it with you and elves anyway? You've said this before, and I never ha- had a chance to ask. Yeah, don't, I don't want to talk about it. it it's a painful memory. They, oh, they, but they Snarkle, are we are childhood friends. Come on, tell me, man. Uh, we are not childhood friends. You are too familiar. I, I think... I think let's let's keep our counsels and uh, I don't want to talk about the, the elves. They are not good people. Mm. Okay, and these people I that are sleeping. Head. Yeah, these people that are sleeping, they have a lot to do with the elves. So I'm a bit suspicious of them. Mm. Okay, so um Akod, as you've I mean you and Snarkle have sort of bonded because you're as I said before, you're the two sort of most experienced well done, John. You're the two most <laughs> experienced fighters of that disastrous mercenary troop. Um the Snarkle clearly is quite um bitter. He's not unpleasant or hostile. No. But something um, this is not just a racial, oh, we don't like elves because they hang around in trees and elves don't like us because we hang around underground. There is something far more significant that Snarkle has not told you about, something that runs very close to his heart. Whereas mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say, Acor, you are, and I think certainly the way Colin has played, Acor is quiet, but he's a fairly open, what you see is what you get sort of person. Um, he's much more open-minded. Okay, Aiko, you take... And a masseuse. And a masseuse as well. Uh, Aiko, <laughs> you, take, you take the first watch and take the opportunity to keep those long masseuse fingers of yours supple by <laughs> just running through a few exercises on the sleeping crayon's left bicep. Oh, um, nice. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm, I'm not lying. If there's free, mas- if free massages going on, Odin's definitely going to get some of those. Okay. Fran's uh, ass is really sore. His left buttock really could do with a bit of a, a bit of loosening up. Oh, so I bad. wouldn't. It's a bit like pulling a pin on a grenade. It will go on. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of things will never leave. The lack has been a lack of fiber, and you really don't want to get too close, just in case. Yeah. Okay. Um. Acor, can you give me a perception roll, please? This will just be a normal perception roll. Okay. Just... And if I may, too, during during the his shift, at least, he's going to cast light. Um, it lasts for 140 minutes. Um, and he'll make sure to cast it on another area within his eyesight range so that it's uh, obvious, to but to act like a, a little... secondary. Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is. Okay, I'm glad you did that. There is a lump of rock, I suppose, that is some distance from you. And sure enough, um, as you suspected, that light draws all sorts of unwanted attention. You can see a few large, what look like bats, sort of fly through and into the light, but then come out the other way. Um, Can you give me a perception roll, please? You bet. After a short while, you can hear snuffling noises and looking, squinting over towards the light, you can see what look like three sort of large, uh, they look like enormous lizards move towards the light and then pause ringed around the light. You recognize them as basilisks because of the way that the light is bouncing off their large eyes. You will be aware, as most travellers are, that a basilisk's gaze can petrify. And there are three of these large creatures, each in our terms the size of a Komodo dragon, that have been drawn to the light that you cast. They continue to snuffle around, two of them sort of rear up and bat at each other with their forelimbs in sort of a of very much um, uh, get away, this is my area, but they're not of a mind to actually fight that hard. The evening is still very warm, which is why these uh, creatures are still active. You know that as the evening gets colder, they will, like any good reptile, um, seek somewhere to shelter from the cold, and they'll become sort of quite sleepy and torpid. 
The creatures, though, are about 50 or 60 feet from you. Do you want to do anything in particular or just watch warily as these basilisks, three of them, move around? Yeah, Acre will actually keep where he is and uh, indirectly watch them peripherally, but stay silent and keep everybody quiet. Won't wake anybody up, but just make sure nobody's okay. moving around. Fortunately, two of the basilisks, after, oh, maybe a couple of hours of your watch, move away towards the west, deeper into the jungle, though still moving towards the water. One, unfortunately, decides to curl up and go to sleep by the log. His head is pointing towards you, or sorry, away from you. And it's obvious that he hasn't detected the low fire that you've still got going. Now, there's about, well, you're about ready to turn in Acor. So it's, your, it's now your decision whether you wake Snarkle. And if you do, is there anything else you want to do before you wake Snarkle and go to sleep yourself? Yeah, probably a bad idea, but at least it's not going to register combat and shouting and screams of death so i'll gently shake snarkel and i'll keep my finger to my mouth as a shh when he does open his eyes that's a great idea what 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 and i i lift his head and kind of prod him up and then i point at the back of the giant beast that is the basilisk and i put my finger to my lips again Okay, so the basilisk I've just put on the map is about there. You can see okay. the small green token. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so Snarkle, you know, he's obviously worked with Acor um, yeah. a lot in the past, and he immediately gets <clears throat> gets the message, if you like. Yeah. And so, sort of nods his head at um, Acor, puts his also puts his finger to his lips. And then, and then does the you know the the finger on each eye, and and points it at the at, at, in the direction of the um, basilisk, indicating that he's going to keep a close eye on it. Okay. Perfect. And uh, Acor nods, and will try to sleep with his back in the corner here. Okay. Snarkle, the basilisk seems to have decided to bed down there for the night. It doesn't seem too worried by the light. And then you can hear across to the right more movement coming towards that light, which is still acting as a as a lure. Um, looking across, can you give me two? Can you give me sorry a perception roll, please? Snarkle, you can see what look like um, two small jungle cats. Prob I mean, when I say cats, they're um, sort of about the size of a, a small panther or um, mountain lion. So they're certainly they would be awkward creatures for you guys to face, but nothing that you'd worry over much about, given your armor and weaponry. The basilisk hears them and, inst and instantly lumbers to its feet and is poised, ready to fight. Do you want to watch or do you want to do something else? So the creatures are coming in sort of this way. Put bets on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just 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 watching Stuart okay as the creatures come closer you can see that the basilisk um just stands stock still and then suddenly lumbers with actually frightening speed once you see the basilisk move you realize that actually it is deceptively heavy and massive it is all muscle all protein and as it moves, you can see it snapping things that you didn't think it would snap, but it does so with astonishing speed and suddenly lumbers out at these creatures, hissing. It doesn't snarl, doesn't growl, it just hisses. And as it does so, you can see that there are green flecks that fall from its open mouth. This instantly alerts the cat and there is a loud snarl. Uh, Cran, Ugnan, Victoria and Acor, can you give me... Um, can you all give me perception rolls, please? 
Uh, all of them will be easy. Cran, yours is medium. Okay. All of you are awakened instantly. Can you, and you can hear snarling and you can hear hissing and you can see Snarkle on his feet looking away towards the north. What do you yeah. want to do? How how tired does sorry? How tired is Cran? Cran yeah. is very tired, very bleary. Um, so I suppose human equivalent, you've probably gone to bed at eleven o'clock and it's two o'clock in the morning. Okay, knackered. Ugnan. I'm not worried about exhaustion, it's more your kind of the, the time and your bleary eyed state and how you're going to kind of figure out where the hell am I and and, and what am I doing here. Ugnan, what do you want to do? He's going to just slide well, a little well, bit. Well, let me just let me just say first. Snarkle kind of puts his hand up behind him, just a, a reassuring gesture to sort of indicate that he's he's got it. You know, he, he's 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 watching it. He's he's not surprised. Okay. All right. So Snarkle puts his hand up. Ugnan, what do you want to do? Well, he was just about to slide forward, and then he stops dead, and looks at him quizzically, and then then looks where his gaze is, and try to see if he can spot anything in there. In the darkness okay victoria you've just woken from sleep you're quite bleary you're quite tired you can hear snarling and hissing off in the distance snarkle stands up and puts his hand behind him yeah i'm just gonna stay to quiet you stay quiet uh Akel, you know that there is a basilisk out there you know what the hissing is so as you wake you figure that the basilisk has been alerted by something do you want to do anything else or do you just want to ignore it and go back to sleep? Yeah, he'll he'll just keep curled up behind the low stone wall there and uh, he trusts his, his party. Okay. So rather than um, immediately shouting, weapons, um, all of you have the sense just to respond to Snarkle's hand and remain quiet. Um, you can give me perception rolls if you want. Um, but I can tell you what happens, or Snarkle can relay what happens. There is some light that's off in the distance, um, which hopefully Acor told you he was going to cast as a well-practiced lure for camping outside in case there's anything unpleasant. So you don't react to the light, but certainly what you're able to see is the basilisk immediately petrifies one of the creatures, but then is obviously able to control its gaze and then leaps at the other cat, which rears up. The cat catches the lizard a fearsome blow with its claws, but the lizard doesn't seem to respond. And then oddly, the lizard just bites at the cat and then retreats. Now, the bite that the lizard gives the creature is quite significant. And the creature turns and rears back, snarling and hissing, and heads towards the path. And it's going to probably come that way um those of you that are watching can you give me a perception roll please okay snarkle your vision is quite good victoria you're able to see in cran as well all of you can see that the basilisk then does something perhaps you didn't expect um it doesn't immediately pursue the creature it just follows so it stays quite away out of the distance but as the creature limps away obviously wounded um the basilisk follows it tracking its path but remaining oh maybe about 30 feet away if the cat stops the basilisk stops and you can see its huge tail just twitch slightly the basilisk though is coming down the path do you want to do anything? Not Ugnan. Be quiet. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, just. Yeah, that's right. Snarkle just gestures in that, in that manner. I'm not going to ask you to make um, hide rolls or stealth rolls. You're deliberately, I mean, you're not doing anything to make any noise. After a while, the basilisk tracks the cat. And when the cat turns away into the jungle, the basilisk does as well. You watch for quite a while. The basilisk goes out of sight. The jungle noises, which went very, very loud when the basilisk started hissing and the cat started snarling, now 
just quieten slightly to their normal uh, cacophony of bird calls. You can hear frogs and you can hear sort of snarls distantly in the forest. And you can also hear even bigger things crashing through the trees. But otherwise, the night returns to normal. Snarkle, you resume your watch. Acor, Victoria, Ugnan, and Cran, you go back to sleep. Snarkle, you've stayed awake for some time for as long as you can. Who do you want to hand the final watch to? Victoria, <clears throat> Ugnan, or Cran? <sighs> Cran's curling up around the fire again. I think it's I think it's got to be Ugnan because um, you can do if you wish. Sorry, yeah. isn't in the best shape. Yeah. So, yeah. so Snarkle shakes gently, shakes Ugnan. Hey, old man, it's time for you to take over. I'm too tired now. All okay. right, Ugnan, you can take the last watch. Um, Good idea. Give me a perception roll, please. Orgiana spent much of the evening while you were awake sitting, just staring into the fire. She didn't seem willing to talk. She seemed preoccupied. Um, and as you became tired, without a word, she just stepped up and slipped off into the trees and vanished. When you wake up and decide to take your watch, she and dawn is just beginning to, or rather there is some light beginning to break through the trees. You reckon dawn is maybe a few, or dawn is a few hours away. Orgiana does not choose to appear to you again, but the rest of the, what's left of the evening passes quite peacefully. Um, and as that familiar rumbling begins to appear in your stomach again, and you decide to think about stoking up the fire, putting on some tea, um, Cran, Victoria, Acor and Snarkle all begin to stir slightly. Um, it's probably time for some more cram. Um, at about the same time, you catch flashes across from the southwest. Could be your airship coming towards you. Do you want to signal to the airship to narrow down where you are? Or do you want to be a little bit more cautious to see what it is? A bit cautious first. Okay. Give me a, since you're the person that's awake, Ugnan, could you give me a hide roll, please? Obviously, Victoria, sorry, Akel went to some lengths last night to hide where your campfire was. Um, you've now stoked up your campfire, and there is a faint plume of smoke rising from your campfire, despite your best efforts. You hope it's not strong enough to alert everything within a sort of a, a 20, 30 mile radius, just in case. Although part of you hopes that as you fumble for the mirror again, that if things go wrong, you hope that at least your airship will be able to see your fire. As the airship comes closer, um, Ugnan, you recognise it as your airship and... Let's see how good the crew is. And the crew are unable to see your thin plume of smoke amongst the trees and the mist that's rising from the damp ground. Can you make a signalling roll, please? Um, and I'll give you a light. This is a light difficulty. I'll give you a bonus to the roll. Give me a signalling roll with the mirror, please. Sure. Uh, I don't think you're going to need skiing for a while. <laughs> okay, you signal with your lamp. Sorry, with your mirror. Oh God! And the crew are on a crew, and the ship is clearly not picking up the signalling. Give me another roll, or wake somebody and hand the mirror to them, or give the mirror quickly to somebody else. All right, you lot, get up. There's something approaching. Okay, mm, basilisk. Roll. Yes, basilisk steak. Give me another signalling roll, then, please, and see if you can do better on this roll. Okay. See if the crew can do worse or better. Sorry. Are we there yet? <laughs> there you go. So um, doing much better this time, taking your time and directing the light at the ship rather than where the ship has been works a treat. And the ship <laughs> pauses and circles around and begins to descend um, so that you can talk to the crew. OK, so there's your, if you recall, that's the top deck of your airship. Right, your ship descends and the ship's, the person you've left in charge of the ship asks whether you are now ready to leave. When was the last and time you spoke to us? 
How long's passed? Okay. He tells you you've been on the island for a week. How long do we think it passed? Three days? Maybe, yes. Difficult wow. to tell. So time is passing twice as quickly on the outside. Um, but you're... Give me reasoning roles, please. Victoria, oh. Ugnan and Cran, give me reasoning roles. <laughs> Acorn Snarkle, you haven't been on the island really fast enough. Right. That's very long enough, fast enough. Ugnan and Cran with a, an uncharacteristic insight. Um, <laughs> Fuck you, GM, I'm rage quitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, when can I hit something? Um, so Cran and Ugnan, um, yeah, you're not surprised that time is passing faster in the outside world. You're aware that time is frozen inside. What you're also aware is that the time dilation that you felt has got worse the longer you've been in the city. So, if you like, the last day that you're in the city, probably four days passed. Right. It's so like an so, exponential type thing. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So, the longer you spend in the city, the more quickly time will advance. Oh, weird. Just because your experience of time slows and slows and slows and slows. So, the longer you spend in the city, the slower time passes for you. Right, yeah, so I've got the physics right. If we spent overnight, <laughs> if we think about that, for, for as far as Silt's concerned, it's probably been two more nights, maybe four more nights. I don't know. So if we need to go and grab Cherry and Numal, we're going to have to get in there and quick as grab them, and get back. If we're going to go Dragon Treasure raiding, we have to be very quick. Something we've got to get just get the Cherry. We've got to get just Cherry and Numal back, haven't we? And then. Uh... The Elven Lass will just have to make her own way. I don't like saying yeah. that. We'll leave her behind. But I just don't know what else to do. We'll come back for her one day. But then you never know. If we're yeah. part of the prophecy, things will work themselves out. Yeah, you've got a god on your side now, mate. Cran says with a chuckle. <laughs> Is that the plan? Yeah, well, I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a good idea to get the elf, but I suppose yeah, you helped us get out of the city, so... Um, we, we we are willing. Uh, well, I am willing to listen to your plan. I don't know about Aiko, but it's also another um, thing. Snarkle, but I don't recommend getting the elf. Is that we've made a little deal with uh, some shipwreck people, but they're not exactly the most trustworthy of people. And the more of us against the less of them, the better. And we know we can trust those two up there in the um in the temple. And you two have proven quite trustworthy. One of those ships could be handy. If we, we those guys are sailors, <laughs> keeps them off our airship, they can sail themselves out of here. That's a bloody yeah, good I idea. I don't want to share my treasure with those people that you're talking about. Who are they? I don't I don't know them. Why are you promising lots of um people all kinds of different things? They're good lads, they're basically like rapists, murderers and pirates, but uh we can trust them, I think. I think they may even like if we want to set up a little navy. They're the boys to help out, I think. All right, so how about this then? New plan. In we go. We go up to retrieve Numal, Cherry, but along the way, we have to go past the docks. We check out the boat. If, uh, either way, we grab the, the two of them, come back, and either the boat's good enough, we do something with that, or we come out back through the gate. What do you reckon? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I will help with that, but I, I don't want to talk to that elf. Keep that elf away from me. You don't like them. Okay. No worries. Um, so Your casual racism is noted. Is... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the plan then is to, to re-enter the city through the Terra Glustrod, the demonic gate. You can retrace your path following uh, some of the internal walled structures um, back to the palace. And then from the palace, you can head into the dockyard. This is an area that you've not explored at all. And you're going to see if there are any intact seaworthy vessels that you can um, basically commandeer and escape with as a means of getting out of the city. Is that right? Yeah, as Cran says, mm -hmm. then we can give that to the pirates so they don't have to worry about them being on yep. the boat. And then that's one of our problems solved. And also they then got a boat. 
Uh, and they'll be indebted to us, especially if we sign some sort of contract with, well, uh, meaningless, but I'll look the guy in the eye, squeeze his hand out, and nobody does a trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why, 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 why are we not getting these pirates to come into the city with us so when we get the boat, they can take it? They look Should quite broken, to be honest with you. Bring them into Tarik Nev? They yeah, they lost a few of their own, and they wouldn't go in. Well, they came with a, a crew of, what, 20-odd? Well, 20-odd survivors. And when we saw them, yeah. I think there was five of them left. Yeah, they, like they'd lost. Remember, they tried to get in the city beforehand. Um, they discovered the password to the gate. Remember, that's where you got the password from. You stole it from them or secretly stole it from them. But they'd already lost um, people inside the city, so they didn't want to go in again. So yes, you are you are all very 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 kind. I mean, you just like to 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 do stuff for these people, and they've done not much for you. I, I don't understand you, but I will follow you. I will see what becomes of this. It's an investment snarkel because uh, they're then going to run a ship for us because we've got a shipping company. They're going to be privateers for us. Privateers. That's that's the word. I can make it's not pirates. Sorry, wrong word. Yeah, yeah. If they're giving us okay. money, they're privateers. If they're taking money from us, they're bloody pirates. Okay, so you re-enter the city uh, using the password that you've got before. And although you're used to it, this is now the third time you will have stepped through the demon's mouth. Um, there is still a shudder that passes through each of you. Remember, this demonic gate that you're stepping through is almost 100 feet uh, in height and size. And if it chose to clothe its mouth and bite down on you, its teeth are the size of, um, well, large doors, there would be nothing that you could do. So... Hey, you... again, how does that uh, password go again? <laughs> <laughs> ah, indeed, the other super secret password. Yeah. So you step through the portal again, until you're by the now familiar um, gate, what remains of the gate. Now, you'll recall that things immediately started going wrong for Silk when you first entered because both of the towers are haunted. Remember that she saw strange visions and you too saw and experienced strange things when you entered the gate yard. So you very quickly move away across to your left so that you can follow um, a wall that leads around what could have been perhaps an estate or a collection of estates belonging to the slightly wealthier of Tarek Nev in its heyday. On the other side of the wall, you can see the houses are much larger and although completely ruined and flattened by the devastation that was brought on Tarek Nev by the Amarishi and the lawmasters that crushed um, the Nereti. Um, many years ago. You can see that these houses were, were quite big in their heyday. You can also see ahead of you, uh, remember this is an area that you decided not to investigate and you were warned not to, um, you can see a, another walled in area which um, perhaps housed gardens and um, maybe botanical gardens um, across to your right. However, you follow a familiar path around to your left and then keep the wall the bluish wall across to your right until you come across um, an open area which is familiar to you because you can see and if i just share that with you okay so you're about here you can see an entrance to your left into this estate you can also see the botanical gardens across to your right or what remains of them. Across to your left, you can see a broad paved area which leads into part of the large estate that you saw near the gatehouse. You can recall that vaguely across ahead of you is another small gatehouse that is an entrance into the naval dockyard. You can you know, you can recall seeing a number of vessels as you flew over. And quite some way across to your right, you know that there's the large temple. Okay. 
it's been a while since you've been in to navigate the rest and to continue your route. Can I have, please, another navigation roll or perception? Navigation is going to be medium. Perception is going to be very hard. You've ignored the mutterings and whisperings of the various demonic entities. Sadly, these are things that you're now getting used to. But as you near the gates to the dockyard, you can hear two things. You can hear, again, the sound of shepherd's pipes off in the distance, but coming closer to you. They're coming from the south. Something is blowing uh, a tune. It's a fairly innocuous to a tune, almost annoyingly simplistic. Um, in fact, you can't help but sort of nod your head in rhythm with it. And the noise is coming from behind you, from the south, so to speak, uh, from the south. Across to your left, you can faintly hear singing, uh, human voices singing what sounds like, for all the world, like some sort of sea shanty. Sailors, perhaps. What do you want to do? The sea shanty across to your left, coming from the dockyards. Um, can you all give me perception rolls, please? The Are they shanty... singing in Yureti? <laughs> <laughs> the sea shanty itself, and you assume it's a sea shanty because of the rhythm and the noise and the cadence. Um, you don't recognise the words. But every now and again, you know, there's that noise that you would imagine as, you know, a sea shanty to make. Certainly, Cran, you've tried to ingratiate yourself with Sarissa and convince her that, yes, the sea shanty is a very misunderstood and very um, much maligned musical mode. And yes, you'd love a good sea shanty. Yes, you'd love to join the male voice choir of Selkai. <laughs> so, yes, the. Uh, Amidst the sound of the sea shanty across to your left, you can hear what sound like barrels being rolled up um, wooden staging, as if a boat is being loaded or a ship is being loaded. And obviously the shanty is a means of keeping the sailors occupied and enjoying what is fairly heavy manual labour. Behind you, the pan pipes are getting louder. And the music is just beginning to get to that. Oh, quite nice, actually. Can you all give me channeling resistance rolls, please? Sorry, mentalism resistance rolls. My apologies. Mentalism <laughs> resistance rolls, please. <laughs> Snarkle, that music is really very, very good. Really entertaining. Yeah, it brings a smile to your lips. Whoever is, whoever is playing that pipe really should be congratulated. And you, you, you'd you really like to listen to some more of this music. It's really uplifting. It's better than any dwarven military marching music that you've heard before. This stuff really gets the blood pumping. For the rest of yeah, you, yeah. the music is just... Yeah, it's Markle starts to whistle and starts to shuffle a bit like he's like he's uh grooving to the tune involved decor decor high five snarkle okay <laughs> um wake or funnily funny that you said that yeah it's that music is certainly it's more than just pleasant to listen to you could quite happily in fact sit down and yeah it would be a good idea maybe i mean Cran is tired and, and, and Victoria has, has seen better, better days. Perhaps, perhaps you could convince them to just, well, why don't we rest here and get whoever is playing that music to come and entertain us? This would be a, as pleasant a way as anything else that you can imagine to pass some time in a demon infested city. Um, uh, Acorn Snarkle, you'd quite like to find out more about who's playing that music and stop and listen. For Victoria Rugnan and Cran, uh, yeah, it's 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 pipe music, you know. What do you want to do, Victoria Ugnan and Crown? Acorn and Snarkle stop and then turn and you can see they're entranced by the music and they begin to walk towards it. What do you Cr Crown will just point and snigger at the dancing. It's like middle aged man shuffling going on there. 
that's hilarious. And, uh, and then he'll go, hang on a minute, it's a bit serious. They're getting like pulled in. Yeah, Good boys, it's terrible. Come back. It's bloody awful on. music. Let's get our get our companions. And I've had a horrible thought as well, by the way. As we've been trudging up here, I've been thinking, how did we feel when we left that gate? You know, we thought we'd been in here three days, and a week had passed. We felt bloody knackered. Now, what do you think happens if that boat sat there since this island fell? I don't know. What did we say? A thousand years ago? Two thousand years ago? What do you think happens if we get past the sea gate into outside the sea? Who cares? Let's go party, man. No, <laughs> it'll age okay, like we did. Arkel. Arkel. Yeah, it might do. Arkel, can you give me another um, mentalism resistance roll, please? Victoria Nugnan and Cran are all for pushing on, but this music is certainly something you definitely want to listen to. Party time. Okay, Acor, definitely party time to the rhythmic beat of panpipes. Um <laughs> There's probably a tambourine going there somewhere. Uh, Acor immediately turns and walks off towards the music. For you, Acor, this is the most entrancing, beautiful music that you have ever heard. Um, there is definitely something else behind the music. Um, the rest of your party, fools that they are, can't hear this, but there is the most beautiful voice singing just above the music. The rest of them can't hear the music properly. Um, so they cannot hear that beautiful voice, which only you can hear. In fact, Acor, can you give me um, another mentalism resistance roll, please? Come on. I don't want them to fail, but I want them to fail to see what happens next. <laughs> oh. Okay. Colin's back okay. next week. What's, what happens to my character? Well, Why am I playing soap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that voice is calling to the party, but obviously only you are lucky enough to hear it. Snarkle, that music is really, really good, really entrancing, but there's something scratching away at the back of your head. There's something not <clears throat> quite right about it. But unfortunately, Acor is now walking very quickly towards the music as Victoria, Ugnan and Cran watch in horror as Acor begins to pick up speed. Can I have right, we've got, we got to get him, Ugnan. Initiative rolls, please, everybody. But Acor's bloody quick, though. I don't want to get hold of him. Cran really isn't. <laughs> Snarkle, um, you can see that Acor lengthens his stride and you can tell because you've been with Acor before he's about to break into a run he's about 15 feet from you what do you want to do so so Snarkle rushes after Acor and tries to grab him round the legs like rugby tackle him yep okay I'm not going to ask you oh, to shit. oh there you Sorry. go then uh <laughs> <laughs> And Victoria just follows up and clubs Acorn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, Victoria... Acorn sidesteps, you guys collide. Because, of course, all of you... All of you <laughs> yeah, it wasn't in. my turn yet. Sorry. Snarkle, um, <laughs> well, after Snarkle, Snarkle rugby tackles Acorn around the legs. Victoria responds as Cran yells, 99! <laughs> and immediately yeah. smacks the nearest person, who happens to be Acorn. Acorn collapses to the ground <laughs> wondering what the fuck was that about there are only pan pipes and you immediately rugby tackled me and you hit me okay so Acor you are grappled and brought to the ground by a combination of Snarkle and Victoria you can hear this beautiful entrancing music as Snarkle and Victoria grapple you to the ground do you want to do anything do you want to I mean how how violent a struggle do you want to put up yeah, now is not massage time. That is for later. Let me go. Okay. <laughs> I'll never let you into Russia now, Matt. Never. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, so can you give me... Let me see. Can you give me a strength roll, please? Snarkle and Victoria, can you give me strength rolls as well, please? Uh, so I'm just going to simplify this as Acor tries to throw you off... Um, uh, Victoria, Victoria. Uh, Snarkle, you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's you, Matt. Matt, why is it always your characters <laughs> that are pulling people and doing things that involve the other the other players going, oh, quick, grab Matt. I mean, Snarkle. I mean, Avery. Now, now, <laughs> you said rule mentalism <laughs> resists rules. I simply failed a few times. Now I'm, I'm bet, into the I character. In your local role-playing club, you walk through the door and people go, oh, great, Matt's here. Have we got any rope? <laughs> Yeah, it's a player. Yeah, killer. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they have a <laughs> close sign that they quickly flip over. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Akel, Akel, um, you're able to just wriggle away from Snarkle, who um, stumbles slightly, but Victoria is obviously a little bit leaner, um, not so much stronger, but just has got a better grip, and you're unable to throw her off um, as you fight to try and go to the music. Ugnan, what do you want to do? It's clear that Victoria and Snarkle have got Acor pinned, but that Acor is clearly have been affected by this music. What do you want to do? Right, lift him up. Acor, you may not trust us, but you, tr you trust that, that little guy, Snarkle, don't you? Well, look, it's something it up is. with that music. Something up with the music. It's got hold of you. You trust him. Let's go. Let's move, move, move. And uh, he'll start uh, trying to help with okay. dragging Acor okay. northwards. All right, so you can oh. lift Acor up. Victoria and Stark will keep a good grip. Um, Acor, I'm going to ask you to make another mentalism resistance roll, please. Only um, I'm going to give you a light penalty to it, please. So you can have plus 10 to your resistance roll. Help, help, I'm being repressed. Because <laughs> <laughs> you do indeed. You indeed that was hard? No, Acor. Or light, uh, sorry. Light, because okay. you do indeed trust Acor. Ugnan is trying to convince you. Um, and this is the best way I know of giving you some sort of modifier to your resistance roll as you try and battle the effects of oh, the spell. Oh, thanks, pal. Yes, that will do it. You overcome the effects of the spell or the effect of the music and are now able to resume your way. But the, the pipe music still lingers behind you. So as you move away, you can still hear the music. You're moving away from the pan pipes as well sorry, from the sea shanties as well, but the music is coming after you and you can still hear it lingering behind. And as you turn and look over your shoulders, can all five of you make perception rolls, please? Silk is playing the tune. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, the music... Always is... has that and always will. Right. The music has changed... And you can hear now that you can all hear above the pipe music. You can hear it's not words that are being sung. Somebody, uh, uh, a young girl, a young woman is humming above the tune quite beautifully. And you can see motes of music, literally motes of music, pink and yellow just drift through the air and fall to the floor and vanish. And as you stop and the music gets louder, you can see more of these motes of music. They're a few inches in size, um, quavers, demi-quavers and, and so on, drift through the air and fall gently to the floor and vanish. What do you want to do? So beautiful. What range are they at? Um, so your vision is limited to about 40 feet or so. So the musical notes are about 30 feet before they fall to the ground. But obviously, as the music comes closer, those musical notes are coming closer and closer. So they're falling to the ground 30 feet from you. 29. Ugnam, what's that? What are that, that weird bloody symbols in the air? Is that like weird magic runes? Let's What's hold, going on? I don't know. Let's hold hands and run again. <laughs> <laughs> Wee! What, you mean towards it? <laughs> no, north. Let's get back. If it's still there, then we'll attack it. All right. Let's go, boys. You're and uh, Victoria, sorry. Well, let's do okay. a, a jog. Mm. Have, have a chance you keep it up, lad. Oh, listen to this. How let's hold Victoria? hands and run. Oh, wait a minute. Let's not hold hands. Let's just jog. That's the manly, <laughs> heroic thing to do. Okay, so you run away from the music. Matt, you should be proud of me. I've got people running from music, let alone bloody Hydra. Um, Beautiful. 
So you jog away from the music and very quickly it's um, out of earshot, whether that's because of the sound of your feet or just the fact that you've outpaced it and you head towards the palace. You remember that there was that deep black ink in, inky darkness with a guardian spirit. Well, of course, you defeated it and it's not returned. But across to your right, you can see that there is still a, a deep patch of darkness. And you know there's a particularly powerful demon in the centre of it. But you don't need to go anywhere near it. You can head in through the gates to the palace area. And soon you are at Vramavere's palace where you can be reunited with Cherry and with Numel and possibly with Silk. And that's where we'll leave this rather long double length episode. For no other reason than I want the series to end on episode 42 and not 44, if you get the reference for what 42 is and you're a hitchhiker. The next episode will be the last one. It will be a long one as well, and I'll catch you then. Thanks very much for watching, listening, subscribing, following, and sticking with us so far. Happy gaming. Cheers.